Thank you for being with us today as we give you the information from what is an apparent double drowning that occurred yesterday afternoon. Let me give you the circumstances. There's Orlando Ortiz, he's 32 years of age, and Velky Velasquez is 38 years of age. They're celebrating their one year anniversary together as a couple. So they decided they would rent a boat. They brought a friend of theirs, Jeffrey Morero, and his two children, 10 and eight year old daughters. They're inexperienced, so they had to take a class before they could rent the boat, and they successfully took the class and went out onto Lake Eloise. Now understand, this is the access, the public access to Lake Eloise, but this is not Lake Eloise. It is through a canal just over my shoulder here. So they rented the boat. I think it was about $450 for the day, and they're out having an afternoon of pleasure on the water. It is a rough day on the water. The wind's blowing about 20 miles an hour. There's a two foot chop with white caps and it's a breezy afternoon. They decide, however, that they'll anchor out in the middle of Lake Eloise. At that time, Miss, Vel uh, Miss, Veles uh, Miss Velesquez takes the anchor and jumps into the water. The anchor rope is not tied to the boat. She's just very inexperienced. So she thinks you have to get into the water, put the anchor in, and then tie it to the boat. Immediately, the engine's off and the boat starts to float away. At that point in time, they see she is struggling. So the two gentlemen jump into the lake in order to save her. And when they jump into the lake, then the boat is continuing to move away. So they start to swim toward the boat. The two gentlemen are told to us to be average swimmers. Apparently, Mrs. Velasquez is a better swimmer. And at some point in time when they can't catch the boat, Miss Velasquez says she sees them struggling to stay above the water. She starts to float. The boat is now moving further away. The 10 year old little girl dials 911. Our deputies hear the live 911. It's a new program, relatively new program we have. Deputy Eicholtz here, who is here with me today and another deputy Deputy Munoz knows that you can't get onto the lake from Lake Eloise, so they race here. Upon their arrival, there's a man putting a fishing boat in the lake so they can commandeer him and his boat. He's more than happy to help. And they race to the scene where Deputy Eichholz, Deputy Munoz, and our fishermen rescue uh, Velky Velasquez. So they save her. She's still floating a period of time later. She has the wherewithal and the expertise and she rolls over on her back and floats. The boat in the meantime continues and has now pushed all the way across the lake into the swamp area with the children on board. Now they can't get to the children so Deputy Munoz strips off his equipment, jumps in and swims to the boat which is hung up in the weeds to get to the children. He, he fires up the boat and drives it around to a dock which is on the backside of Legoland. I want to underscore that Legoland had nothing to do with this event. They were not visiting Legoland. However, and I want to underscore, Legoland has gone above and beyond and allowed us to use a dock on the backside of their hotel. 
Legoland could not have been a better community partner. They were just totally and continue to be totally awesome. So resources from the fire departments were put in the lake as well as FWC and the Sheriff's Office. We looked yesterday evening. Our policy at the Sheriff's Office is when someone goes into the lake such as this, we never leave until we find them and that's 24-7. We don't allow anyone's loved one to stay in a lake and we show up the next morning. We're there, we're involved, we're searching for these two missing gentlemen as if they were our brothers or our children and we'll continue to look for them. Of course we have drones, helicopters, we've asked Seminole County Sheriff's Office to respond and Sheriff Lima, my friend, is just awesome. He sent his resources to help us as well. He's got an underwater drone. We'll continue to search until we find them. Will that be today or tomorrow or Tuesday or Wednesday? We don't know. The water temperature at the bottom of the lake is 64 degrees. It is a cool day today. So we know that with history that the, when, and we certainly are supposing with a great deal of experience that these people are deceased at the bottom of the lake or they float in between the bottom of the lake and the top of the lake. So they're very difficult to find. We hope to find them sooner rather than later but they will eventually float if we're unable to locate them in the meantime. So we searched all evening, we searched last night, we're searching all day today, we'll search tonight, and we'll continue to search around the clock until we locate them. So while we were able to save the, the one lady because of the rapid response of our deputies and a wonderful citizen in this community who said, hey, I'm in, get on the boat, let's go find them and worked very, very diligently with us, we still don't know where the two gentlemen are. And certainly we have every expectation that they've perished in the water by drowning. The investigation's ongoing. The search and recovery is ongoing by the members of the Sheriff's Office here, Seminole Sheriff's Office and FWC. You know what we know at this point in the investigation. Do you have any questions? I don't, the, the water vacillates, it can be as much, this is not a deep water lake, so we're probably dealing with 16 to 20 foot of water at the max, and it can be as shallow as nine feet of water. And understand, lakes, even though, if you're not familiar with them, they are living, moving bodies. So we have to search now the, probably half the lake. We know which way the lake is, the currents, the undercurrents are. We know where, how the wind was pushing. So it's a, it's a relatively large lake to search and the water is deep enough that it can create conflict for us in locating them. But we will find them. And certainly I've talked to the family, as you well expect, they're totally devastated and our heart breaks for them and we have all of them in our prayers. The children are currently not here, but they're obviously upset because they saw all of this unfold right before their eyes. I give a great deal of credit to the 10 year old who had the wherewithal to take one of the cell phones on board and immediately dial 911 and we responded. So the 10 year old in, in essence is responsible for us saving the one lady with that 911 call. So there was a lot of moving parts in order to get her out of the water alive. We just wish we were able to do the same for the guys, but they went down rather quickly as, as is explained to us. Okay, thank you very much, take care.